Hello, I'm Kate Davis Speak, and I'm very happy to be here with lovely Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Beers. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, listeners and viewers, wherever you are in the world right now. This is the one and only Hellblazer Biz you are tuned into, and your host, as always, me, Chris Gordon. Appreciate you joining me. As always, I am in my new abode. So different surroundings. <laughs> Today I am not going to give you a long, boring introduction to me. As I always seem to do, I'm going to not beat about the bush and I'm going to introduce you to a returning guest of mine, uh, a good friend and someone who is very supportive of the show as I am her work because she is a fantastic actress. She can currently be seen in Cannibal Farm as well as Horizon, the web series, and she's soon going to be coming out in a film, The Barge People. So without further ado, I introduce to you the lovely and delightful Kate Davies Speak. Hey everybody, I have the honour and the pleasure of the company once again of Kate Davies Speak, who was Kate Davies last time, now you're Kate Davies Speak. <laughs> Indeed I am. You are Mrs. Mrs. <laughs> Still getting used to my new name, but here it is. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here again. Yes, you're welcome. Thanks for coming back and thanks for your support, as always. It's very much appreciated. <laughs> cool. So, yeah, well, here we are. Um, I'm trying to remember the last time we spoke. It must have been a good few months ago now. Yes. Yeah. You... <laughs> it's the last of the year, I think. Yeah, it must have I been. Think. Yeah. And you've been a very... Missed... very... Sorry? I've missed you. Oh, likewise. <laughs> It's always good to say. It's always good to catch up. Like you know, this must be what third, fourth time now. I think it is the fourth. Yeah, yeah. I can't stop. <laughs> I know. Yeah, you keep coming back. So <laughs> it's all good for me. It's all good for me. You've got a good. You've got a good user base. So okay, nicely. <laughs> I can yeah, use. Okay. You. I, I have a brilliant, brilliant uh, bunch of Twitter supporters. They mean the world to me. So uh, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, we've spoken about that before with social media because you're an absolute huge, I mean, obviously a huge fan of social media and, you, you know, you utilise every aspect of it with the video messages and the voice messages and, and it does, it kind of, for me, that, <laughs> it means a lot more when you actually see that and hear that, I think, than just a few words written down. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm i lazy at typing, but I, and I, I just like putting videos out there. I feel like it's it's just a little bit more like I'm actually engaging and interacting with my um, with my followers and friends and stuff. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I like Twitter very much. <laughs> excellent, excellent. You, you wouldn't be able to tell. No. <laughs> well, no, it's a great way to get yourself out there and like, you know, and it's working because obviously you, you've been... I wouldn't say horrendously busy, that's the wrong word. You've been exceedingly busy this past year um, with, with projects that you've got going on and, yeah. and some fantastic new, obviously, horror films that you've come out with, uh, which seems to be a genre that you're getting into there. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's. Uh, I, I feel very lucky to kind of get pulled back into that genre. I mean, it's a genre that I... Uh, this is horror, of course, and uh, it's something that I, um, I grew up loving. Um, a lot of my idols are stars of horror, a lot mm. of my favourite films are horror, and here I am. It almost seems to make perfect sense that I'd be doing it. I mean, I still remember back at primary school chasing my friend around with fake um, knives and stuff, so it makes <laughs> make uh, horror films yeah. or something. Okay, like, let's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Make a sharp yeah, exit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite horror then, Kate? What's your favourite horror right. film? Blinking big question to throw at me. <laughs> okay, I like it, though. Um, my favourite... Um, I mean, I like I like your classics. I love stuff like Halloween. Mm -hmm. I love The Fog, Christine. Um, big fan of John Carpenter. Um, but actually, one of my favourites is Scream. I have such a love for that film. I used to watch it religiously, um, I, pretty much on repeat. Um, I was a, a big fan of um, the character of Sidney Prescott, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I just love that. I love the kind of blend of of scares and horror, but also a tiny little fraction of comedy as well. And yeah. also, they always gave um, they always gave a little nod to their audience as well and, and lots mm -hmm. of little tributes to other filmmakers and um and iconic characters and names and stuff um I, to me it's just one of the perfect horror films i love it but um uh a, another one i'm very keen on i'd say more up to date really is uh, eden lake which i suppose is okay. more thriller horror than outright horror mm -hmm. um but it's uh it's just brilliant if you haven't seen it i really really recommend it it's, uh, it's very very 
quite a the very last sec- second. So uh, uh, I'd say that's one of my favourites currently. I, I agree with you. Um, Scream is brilliant. It's like, I'm getting a little woozy here. <laughs> yeah, I love that line. <laughs> Matthew Lillard. <laughs> He's awesome. He's just yeah. such a such a good actor. He's I'd love to meet him one day. Um, but yeah, that oh. I, definitely. He's he's very versatile as well. Oh, I love him without a paddle. Have you seen him without a paddle? I haven't actually. No. I'll oh, watch it. You'll be in tears of laughter. It's hilarious. It's him, Seth. Oh, what's his name? Green. Yes, Seth Green, the little guy from. Uh, yeah. Yeah, from the original It and everything as well. And I, I can't remember the others. Oh. I'll have to get the name for you. I can't remember his other name, but the three of them are together. The lot. It's, it's just pure hilarity. <laughs> really yeah. brilliant. But, but yeah, horror films. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, agreed. All the classics are great. Which you know, obviously, you know, the Halloweens, and I think there was, there's a genre where it went a bit weird. Um, I guess, um, these, I uh, with a lot of research, really, that we did uh, for one of my current projects, the Barge People. I was really drawn to um, like uh, older. Um, types of horror stuff that looks a bit kind of 70s or, or sort of early 80s and stuff mm-hmm. so I like anything that has that kind of vibe to it um, yeah so like I mentioned as well you know, like um, uh, a lot of the carpenter stuff it's just so hard to beat it really it is um, it is it... well definitely, definitely did you watch The Mist yet the, re- the remake in the series on that I haven't yet um, I don't know why I haven't yet actually it's, it's, a, it's a corker as well it's a great series Obviously, it'd be better if you were okay. in it. Yeah, get yourself. <laughs> Did you say that's on Netflix? It is. Yes, it's on Netflix. Yeah, okay. the whole series. One of these. Cool. Just, uh, definitely one for watch. It is on Netflix. So if you if you want to put that in, that's a it's a brilliant. I mean, I love the film, but the series is really good. It really is good. Oh. Yeah, I'll stick that on my list of things to watch once I've uh, gone through my backlog of of uh, programs I'm currently watching on there. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, I was going to say you've already mentioned kind of thing with the barge people. There is how do you research be- with the roles that you do do? Because um, I like you know like the barge people and like uh, what's the other one with well, the big one? <laughs> Dead. I mean, Dead Love's another one you've been in, and Escape Cannibal from Cannibal Farm, Farm was a great one. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I don't. When it comes to character research, I mean, I just learn the character on the page. I'd, I'll just read the script over and over again and get an idea mm-hmm. um, for her. Um, but my cat, my cat, my <laughs> character, cat in yep. the Barge People, she uh, she's quite straightforward actually. And I was quite lucky that I'm I'm good friends with the writer, which is how the film came about in the first place. So right. if I had any questions about her, I would talk to him. But essentially, she was written for me. So. I actually had to play myself as much as possible on screen, more than I've ever had to do before, um, which I found quite interesting because she's... Um, I play a lot of quite tough characters on screen, mm-hmm. but I'm not actually like that at all in real life. I'm very... <laughs> yeah. Um, and and that's more what Kat was like. So playing someone like that in a, in a horror film was, was very different for me, playing mm-hmm. more of like a victim than a than a tough, sassy character, really. Um, But I really enjoyed that as well. Um, I suppose, research-wise, I just, you know, I use any excuse to sit and watch some old classic horrors again, so I I, I did that. I mean, the the few that we specifically were basing, I suppose, the style of the film on was um, Eden Lake, which I mentioned earlier. Yeah. Uh, The the Hills of Eyes, Mm -hmm. um, the remake remake of that. Um, The Fog which is another one that I absolutely love, and The Wrong Turn, which I love again. So <laughs> all of these kind of films were yeah. the main um, influences. But I, uh, when I spoke to my director, Charlie, about my character, I, you know, I wanted to decide what she looked like. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see her whilst I was reading it. And um, I, uh, I actually based her heavily, her look, on uh, an actress called Jocelyn Donahue, who is brilliant. She's in a, um, an indie film called The House of the Devil that did really well in a lot of um, horror festivals. Okay. And, um, her performance was, was incredibly naturalistic in House of Devil, and I just loved her. And she just had this really cute, wholesome look about her. She had this woolly hat, this mm-hmm. big scarf. She kind of, in the in her style of dress, she looked like the kind of girl that I suppose you'd want to protect a bit more, really, rather than yeah. um, a lot of characters like, for example, my character Jessica Harvard in Escape from Cannibal Farm. She's got like the kind of midriff top on, you know, muscles out, and she's more like "Come and get me, monsters" kind of thing, mm. whereas Again, Kat was very different, so I wanted her to look like this kind of innocent girl next door kind of thing. So, yeah. I, sorry, 
I was, I was agreeing with you. I was saying sorry. Oh, <laughs> yes, so I, I so I watched um, the House of the Devil several times, and um, I, I actually got my hair cut a different. It's a lot shorter than it was before. I got my fringe mm-hmm. um, cut and stuff as well, just to kind of give more of this look that I was basing her on. I didn't want to outright copy her. Yeah. This is very by her, and also I wanted to look a little bit different mm-hmm. to what I do in some of my some of my other films because I work often with the same filmmakers because I'm a big fan of working with them and they're happy to keep bringing me back yeah um I it's important for me that people don't get me confused at any point with you know they they don't get Mm -hmm. my characters confused I want them to see that we've worked on making things very different each time I don't want there to really be any similarities and um I'm going off on one now but we did that uh, we did that some more with another film that I was in with the same company at the start of the year um called the House of Violent Desire Mm -hmm. I played a incredibly different character she was more like um something out of like pride and prejudice uh, right. very, it was more like a gothic period horror yeah. um thriller and she was very different again very very innocent i changed the pitch of voice slightly to make her sound a little bit more innocent and a little bit more well-spoken and stuff mm-hmm. so i just like to play around with little things really um rather than do loads of research it's just more about me um seeing the role in my head loads before i actually get to set and then i just do what I've already seen in my head. Really, I, I just bring them, bring them to life. <laughs> uh, but that's that's one of the joys of, of acting is is getting the chance to play different characters. So the more that you can do that, the better, really. Yeah, no, no, that's great. And I mean, um, you are. I was going to mention the hair because it, it does. I can notice how much shorter it is compared to the last time with the beard. Yeah, I, I don't. It's weird now that I finished playing Cat. I, I'm like, ah, oh, but I'm not me anymore. Now I've turned into her. Now I can't come back. Again. Yeah. I've got my hair. Um, but that's fine, you know. I'll, I'll I'll find another role soon that that I don't know something drastically different again, and I'll, I'll give myself another look. I don't know. It's it's quite fun to transport. Like, it's yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. You get away with it as well. Yeah, you it's can do. You can just don't go as a convict, and where you'll have to shave it all off. <laughs> Funny you should mention that. I might be doing that at some point. Not all of it, but I have a certain look that I want to go for for a character next year. So all we'll right, do. okay. <laughs> but that, Pro- that, that, that yeah. That would be a big sacrifice, so I'd have to really yeah. think long and hard. <laughs> I personally think that rather than getting maybe like a skinhead or something, I could do something. I could still give that kind of look, but maybe a bit more like a mohawk or something. I don't yeah. know, like a like an up a bit like um. I love Rosario Dawson on yeah. um, City, that kind of thing. So um, I don't know. I want to play with it. I want to see if it's <laughs> going to work or not. But um, yeah, different different looks is fun. Yeah, no, no. Well, that's that's great. And like you say, there's you know making yourself look like you want to play different characters each time, and and people yeah. be able to be able to distinguish because there are, I'm not going to mention any names um, because I don't want a libel suit. Uh, but there are many characters, and big, even big names and big actors out there. But because they've they play they play the same kind of character in every film. Mm-hmm. You you all you ever do is you say, oh look, it's such and such a person rather than the character. Yeah. And, Although the the films are fantastic films, and you know I love them all to bits, but every single film you can see this, this these people are the same yeah. over and over again. So to have proper acting in, you know, in, in, or not proper acting that sounds awful. You know what I mean? <laughs> to be able to have the versatile versatility to actually change your characters and and yeah. you know and add little bits and of yourself and change things around so that it's everything is different. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've always liked to justify maybe looking a certain way physically as in uh, to utilise my skills as a fitness instructor. So I'll be like, oh, I know my character's got to look like she can wield a sword or um, yeah. or fight someone. So therefore, I will train with that in mind. So I'll try and look a bit more toned and muscular for that role. Mm-hmm. I haven't done one yet where I've had to pile on the pounds. I kind of want one. So I've got my excuse to uh, really go <laughs> pound the cake or something. But um, <laughs> but I, I, do, I do like that ability to be able to change within reason. And actually, uh, I wanted to... Um, maybe at some point go slightly different with the colour of my hair um, because I've been doing this whole, I don't know if you see this whole thing that I've been doing, this whole Batgirl campaign yeah. uh, pushing to just try and get the opportunity to cast for the role of Batgirl, she's a redhead I thought, Do you know what, I kind of fancy seeing what I look like as a redhead, um, but up until recently I've been, I had two reasons mainly why I couldn't do that, one was my wedding I didn't mm-hmm. want to do anything <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want Steve to look at me on my wedding day I'm like oh well hello (laughs) um and uh the the other was I up until very recently I was playing a reoccurring role of Nicole in um season uh season two 
And um, I wasn't allowed to change the way that I looked for her, understandably, yeah. because it, it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, the True. season two is shot like three days, is set three days after season one. So right. I... <laughs> yeah, suddenly you suddenly changed your complete appearance. <laughs> wow, that character's priorities are all over the shop. <laughs> She's gone, now I've got my hair do. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so anyway, now that yeah. I've got that, freedom, I've got something to think about, really. And uh, I finished projects so far for this year. So I've got more time over Christmas now to think about if I want to look a bit different next year. But again, it's quite exciting, so... Yeah, that, <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah, you didn't want Horizon turning into like EastEnders or anything where suddenly Ben Mitchell's <laughs> a completely new person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Set two days later, wow, what's happened? <laughs> Goes away in the back of a taxi and comes yeah. back completely different. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that happens so much. It's quite, it's quite funny now when you watch it. <laughs> but it's good. It's also quite interesting how quickly your audience just accepts that. You know, yeah, like, exactly, yeah. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah, that's that's that character now. I get it. You know, completely <laughs> <laughs> like entire appearance, but it is. It's, it is. It's, yeah, it's actually. Um, yeah, that's a very good social, social <laughs> point to make there about how how we just absorb <laughs> what what we see in there. Cool. I mean, yeah. Obviously, you've, you've done Horizon there now. That was season two of Horizon. Yes. Um, is there going to be another season? I, I don't think forgive so. my ignorance. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not... No, it's fine. It's um, uh, uh, quite a few people have asked that recently, and um, I would say. I mean, never say never, but I would say that the way that we wrapped up season two, it's a nice way to finish the whole thing. So um, I don't imagine there'll be a season three. I think if anything, we might look more at what can happen with Horizon, you know, what they what the guys can do with it, where they can put it, you know, whether or not we could get it on something like Netflix or what have you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I mean, that's it's not really for me to say what they'll do with it. I just can't wait for season two to come out because we've got such a brilliant um, kind of fan base for the show people that have invested their time and their thoughts in the the series and the characters and the events mm-hmm. and we just want to we want to give them what they want to see really it's just um that sometimes the post production process takes a little bit of time when you've got a small crew and yeah. lots and lots of special effects to do and stuff like that but um rest assured if anyone hears this who is a fan of the show um i think you're in for a real treat with season 2 i loved every minute of working on it and i'm just so proud of every single person on that team they're just amazing and it was uh, it was literally one of the highlights of my life working on that so uh, i hope you'll enjoy it brilliant brilliant i will watch it um, i know where to find it so i will be watching like i said to you before it's unfortunate because the, the the plus side of doing what i do is and what, I'm, what i've been learning is the fact that obviously i get to speak to great and lovely people like yourself and often but the, the downside is that every time i get another game <laughs> it might be someone suggesting someone not in your case because i know you quite well but obviously other people and there's the research it's like Damn it! That's another TV show I've got to watch. Another so TV shows that I was going to had on my schedule have now been pushed back and back and back, so I can get the new TV shows on to whatever they're on, all the film, what you know, the indie films or something to put in. Because I've had quite a lot of independent stuff lately. Because like you know, um, I bet you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a big supporter of indie film, and I, I kind of, I, in fact, I love it because I think a lot of more. I don't know. I think you get a lot more character depth, and you get a lot of feeling because. The, the, a lot of the people in there with independent film, you know, they're not the huge big budgets of Hollywood, but so people, the people who go in for it, because the, the, the passion is really there, and the passion is what shows through for these films. I completely agree, and I, I, I also agree that you are a brilliant supporter of indie film. I think that's how we met originally. Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, uh, and we appreciate that too. Um, and I, I completely agree with you. I think that there's a lot of passion and um, creativity and original ideas and all right so a lot of these companies are lacking in funds because that's just the reality of the yeah. situation but they don't lack in terms of their um their hopes for what they want to set out and achieve mm-hmm. and um uh, every single project um that you get the opportunity to work with is is a real honor actually because um you know people have often invested many many years into this production before they even bring the cast in yeah and um they just want their they just want their gig to be successful you know so it's just nice to be part of that with people and i've been so lucky um with the people that i've worked with and if, if it's okay to mention actually in particular there's uh, a film that i worked on this year called dead air mm-hmm. um and uh currently it's a short film um we it, it was funded by supporters and crowdfunders. Okay. Uh, we shot we shot the first part as as a short. Mm-hmm. Um, they're now crowdfunding for the post production process so that they can finish the gig and show people what we've made, which we're really really proud of. Yeah. This is the one that's 
often described as gremlins on a plane. Mm-hmm. I've um, seen the clip. It's... I've seen your pictures from it. <laughs> little film, and I'm really excited about it. I just really, really hope that people continue to get behind the film because, um, as I say, this is lots and lots of years of passion chucked in this mm-hmm. one, and you could see it the second we stepped on set. Um, I work with the most amazing actors, not just in terms of their ability, yeah. but they were just so lovely and supportive and it really became like a little family almost immediately. Um, and uh, once they've got that post-production goal, um, once they've hit their target, hopefully, they'll bring that out as a short for people to enjoy. But the bigger picture is they've written the feature or they're writing the feature. And if people like the short, we can use that then to promote trying to get the feature done as well. But oh, I fantastic. totally believe in exactly the kind of film I would 100% want to go and see myself. I mean, mm-hmm. that's why I wanted to be part of it. Yeah. Um, as soon as they told me it involved rock chicks on a plane fighting <laughs> critters, I, get, get me in. <laughs> um, and they, and uh, I loved every single second of it. So um, please, if anyone can support them in any way, even if it's just sharing or talking about the project, yeah. I know it'll mean the guys and they they truly deserve it so fantastic i will go out and share that and ask people too as well because i've I've seen the pictures i've been watching on your facebook and everything and i've seen stuff that you've put about it and it just does it looks brilliant it's crazy because like one minute there's you like this next minute it's like the comp yeah (laughs) oh it was was just brilliant i mean i'm terrified of flying so um being able to film on an airplane and not be scared of heights was um was quite a joy yeah um but so convincing i mean uh yeah, being on this aeroplane, and um, it was uh, we were very tight of space, and I had to swing my bass guitar around, mm-hmm. like attacking these critters and stuff. <laughs> I, I don't think there was one moment where we weren't just all laughing at something. Yeah. All, the, all these aesthetics we had all over us, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was it was a right giggle. So Excellent. if we get the chance to do the feature, then I, you know, if they'd yeah. have me back, I'd be all over it. So. Oh, brilliant, brilliant! And again, that's the great thing about the Indian stuff because you let you do you, you do become a f- complete tight knit family there, and you know and uh, especially if it's crowdfunded as well because that's it's people out there it's the people who are watching this the people who are listening to this the people who follow you they're the ones who yeah. get these films made so you know you can tell them that you, that the that it's, it's something that people want to see and it's something that people would love to see um, and it brings it together I think because well. it makes the fans also part of that family doesn't it it does yeah because they I mean they have essentially made the film happen so they can take a large part of the the kind of glory of the film for themselves, really, and know that if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have been able to do it. So it's just a nice collaboration, really, and we're really grateful for it. Definitely, I mean, it's a, it's a lovely thing. I think that is how we first met because I think I my I donated to a project, won't name it, uh, <laughs> and that's how we kind of we got into it. And you know, um, and <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it all started. But it is, it's lovely. I mean, I was, when I was looking away before, it wasn't because I was being rude. It was like, one, I was looking for questions, but two, it's just popped up. The film I did last year was Is This Now? And it's an independent film. And the character, I had a, I had a speaking part as well. For, would you believe my first role was a speaking part? Um, and cool. Yeah, and I've just noticed that the director has won the best screenplay for Is This Now? Desert Rocks Film and Music Event 2017. <laughs> So, oh yeah. wow, that's awesome! Yeah, so you know, I, I'm <laughs> next one will be best supporting actor. Well, that's <laughs> yeah, sadly oh, I won't be. Getting, yeah, yeah so, so it was nice. I just saw that pop up then, so I thought that's you know, it's a good thing about independent because you do you have to go to the fe- all the film festivals as well, and you're pushing yes. things out, and you know that's how that's how it gets yes. noticed and and. It's just, it's, I just love independent film. I know that sounds corny, but <laughs> there's just so much out there, which... No. And and you never know. You just When you make a project, you just don't know where it's going to be. You don't know if it will ever be seen by anyone. You mm-hmm. don't know if people are going to buy it. You don't know if it's going to make it into festivals. But you still do every project with the love and passion as if it is going to make it out to the cinemas or the yeah. television screen, whatever you do. Uh, and... Um, it's brilliant when you get something like that when you just get something back that's like yeah you know people have enjoyed it done well done <laughs> exactly exactly and whether it's my part or not if you've broken up again uh, <laughs> whether <laughs> I highly doubt my character in there is going to be liked by anybody um, in fact <laughs> if people ever saw it they'll probably start throwing so it's the worst character you could ever possibly be in, in, in oh, a, uh... <laughs> Oh no! Believe me, I don't know whether my acting was as bad, but, but the, <laughs> that's that's yet to be seen. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, so I haven't been able to. Yes. Sorry. 
I'm going to have to watch this now. Have you, have you got a copy of it, or is it not out? Is it not out for public yet? It's not out for the public yet. I don't believe. I keep asking, can I have a copy of it so I can see it? And they're like, they they keep saying yes, okay, but then I've not I've not seen it yet. Nasty Nick's in it from EastEnders. Oh, not, cool. <laughs> yeah, John Altman. Not that I met him because I I only did like you know as you very very well know sometimes. I was only in for one day of like a whole year or something of them filming the whole thing, you know. So it wasn't, yeah. Was the one with um? Did it have Sabrina in it as well? Sabrina yes, yes, Beckett. yeah, that's the one. Yeah. You know, really well. She's awesome. Yeah, yeah, she was great. She gave me such a good compliment on that day as well. So she, she, she made me feel good because I was it was my first ever screen, first ever been. I've been on theatre before years ago, and it was my first ever time yeah. filming on screen, and I was really panicking and really nervous. And she turned around. And she goes, "Seriously, this is your first time filming." And I was like, oh. oh, that's really nice. And she goes, no. She goes, it was, <laughs> you did really well. So I was like, thank you. And she's, oh, she's a lovely girl. Yeah, I was. I wouldn't. I wouldn't expect anything different from Sabrina. She's always lovely, and I, I've had the pleasure of working with her a couple of times actually. And um, yeah, she's great, and she's 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 doing so well in the industry. So that's yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And yeah, you'll laugh. You'll, I won't tell you about because it, it will spoil the end of the film. But uh, yeah, <laughs> there's quite a, 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 an intense scene. Not that kind of intense. <laughs> I'm just hasten to point out, but it was a, oh, it, was, it was a good scene. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Anyway, moving on. I mean, you've got other films out as well, because obviously I want to uh, push everything that we can about <laughs> what Kate Davies speaks doing at the moment. I've seen <laughs> Kaleidoscope Man as well. Now that's brought to my attention because of the lovely. Uh, there's some nice artwork on that one <laughs> as well. <laughs> that. Um, I still haven't seen that one yet. That was actually one of the first feature films I ever worked on. I okay. had quite a small part in it, but I just wanted to. Well, I didn't just want to. I I, I was lucky to be part of it. And um, uh, up until that point, I'd mainly done theatre work. So when mm-hmm. I was offered the opportunity to work in feature film, I jumped at it. And um, I'm dying to see it because I've done quite a lot since. So it's always good to watch some of your first work back and see how it goes. Um, but uh, they're another great team. Um, Simon Cox is lovely. Um, mm-hmm. And he's got such a brilliant bunch of supporters as well on that film. So um, I think we're all rooting for rooting for that to do well. Excellent, excellent. And I think you filmed Escape from Cannibal Farm. I think that was being filmed or you were just about to when we last spoke. Yeah, I mean, that's actually that's actually out that's now. That's out I mean, now, isn't it? Yeah, I've still... Yeah, again, it's out. Seen. <laughs> I went to all the screenings that they did of it and um, I was really pleased with it. Uh, and uh, it's now out. Um, it only came out, I think, on Halloween in, I think maybe Sweden or something. But it's um, it's got distribution all over, including the UK and the States. But it's coming out in different places okay, at different yeah, times. Okay, it's just so it be, um, Yeah, like really soon. I'm, I'm even thinking maybe before Christmas. So I hope people enjoy it as much as we enjoyed filming it because that for me was um, uh, again, you know, pretty much working with family. I love these filmmakers mm-hmm. so much. Um, I work on every one of their films if they have me, um, and yeah. I'd enjoy the character. It's my kind of horror, um, and uh, yeah, we were pleased with it, so we just hope people will enjoy it. Excellent, right. excellent. You mentioned screenings there as well, and I know a question that was thrown into us, which was from Mark Anthony Bothwell, and he was asking <laughs> if there are any London, any more London screenings planned. I hope so. I met Mark at the screening for Cannibal Farm, actually. Okay. Um, it was great to meet one of my Twitter friends on there. Um, so we, as I said, we just had a screening for the House of Violent Desire maybe two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I imagine there'll be a couple more screenings of that. There'll be, uh, definitely there's going to be a screening in Bristol where I'm based. Yeah. Maybe again in London. Um, I am going to a screening of another quite obscure film that I shot called The District Nurse. Um, okay. I'm going to be in London. Uh, I think it's the... The 9th of December. That's like a very odd art house revenge film, but um, mm-hmm. I'm interested to see how that one comes out. I filmed that back in 2012, so wow, okay. I'm quite curious to see how it turned out. A bit scared about inviting people along in case I did a bad job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm sure everyone else did brilliantly, but I'm a little bit paranoid when it comes <laughs> to that. Um, so that's that's going on. You know, if people do want to come, then by all means, you know. Um, but uh, let me think. And there will be a screening for Horizon Season 2 before it goes um, live yeah. for people to watch. But I don't know whether it might just be for cast and crew. Mm-hmm. And um, certainly when the Barge People's finished uh, post-production, that will have a public screening. And it's more than likely to be around, I've been told kind of around June next year. But I will 
undoubtedly be promoting the hell out of that <laughs> rest assured you won't miss that one <laughs> i think it for now but um as with anything i you know i like to keep people up to date with stuff that's coming yeah. out but if i go buy it it's sometimes because i don't want people to come and see a certain <laughs> film <laughs> It's, it's I've, I've, yeah, yeah. I think I'm in London on the ninth. Actually, it's a weekend that one, isn't it? Maybe we can finally have our coffee day. I know. Yeah, my family are coming down for that weekend because we were going to do Wales Comic Con, but I decided I can't afford because I worked out the amount of guests who are going. There's some awesome people going to it in Wales, but then I worked out to meet them all, it's going to cost me four hundred pound. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I I love what I do here and I love talking to guests I was thinking yeah. I can't justify now paying 30 quid to meet someone just to give them my business card to say can you come on my show <laughs> no I, I think that's a wise decision <laughs> well if you if you happen to be in London when I'm in London and you fancy it we can either go out for a coffee or a cheeky glass of wine yep that sounds good to me <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant and yes yeah, so that was uh, December there was something oh uh, the ninth. Yeah, the 9th of December, and I've just lost my flesh. The barge people, that was it. I was going to say, you've had a great banter on the barge people as well with uh, another former guest of mine, and someone I absolutely adore to bits because he's got to be the nicest guy I've ever met in my life is Justin Lee Collins. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm so, I, I mean, yeah, what a great guy. How supportive and brilliant he is. And, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, that means a lot to me, you know, as as, a, as an unknown actress, mm -hmm. getting the attention of someone who's who's... Um, known like he is also he's a fellow bristol lad so he that's is, nice yeah. um and uh yeah he's been incredibly supportive and uh i really like that about him so he's uh he's definitely won me as a fan so um <laughs> justin if you happen to listen to this thank you so much it means a lot to me and the cast and the crew and also he's been supporting dead air as well so um thank you very much oh fantastic that. brilliant now i didn't know he's supporting dead air as well i know he's doing the barge people because he just loved them he just it was amazing because yeah, so i saw the tweets he was saying that he just loves the whole little idea of it all and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's so nice. <laughs> it is, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a great guy. So I've met him a few times now, and he was the. And I know there's been issues about him in the past, which I won't go into. But he was the most genuine, and everyone who met him again, I know it's taken away. But he was the most genuine, nice person. Originally, he was just autographing for free. Then they started give, charging for him, and it's. But even then, he was. He, he spoke to everyone, and the queue for him just took a, such a long time because when you went to, you spent like 20-30 minutes talking to every single person like you do you know with, with your fans you actually take time and and that's well, that really makes people warm so much more to the person you've got to I mean um, I mean I'm, I'm not at any kind of level where I see it any differently but I like to think no matter where I ever get to that will always be the same because um, without without fans supporters audience what's the point of making stuff you know mm -hmm. so you've got to you've got it's the least you can do and um i like it i enjoy it i i really do try and respond to people as much as possible because i understand as you've just said with justin lee collins i understand how it feels to have that interaction with someone that you um that you admire that you know that it, it means yeah. a lot to you it really does uh get you right in the feels so um <laughs> i understand how that feels and if i can be a part of that for someone else then mm -hmm. that's something i'm going to do and that goes a long way. So I think having a relationship with with the with the actors and fans is brilliant. And that is something I think you're very, like we said at the beginning, it's something you are very well known for and you're very famous for in that respect on Twitter because it's some you your passion and you believe so much in it. Like we've just talked about is 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 amazing. Thank you, but uh, yeah, again, like I, I I'm very grateful as well. Like genuinely to you, to to everyone else who supports anything that um that I kind of tweet on about and uh uh and and that's really how things do well is when everyone works together as a team it always sounds so bloody corny but it's true <laughs> you know <laughs> teamwork makes the dream work oh yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> teamwork teamwork cool yeah i was going to say there's was, there is was actually though you say there's no i in teamwork in team but there is and it's between the a and the whole, I think it is. It's between the A-hole. Because <laughs> if you look in the, in, when you've got a capital A, there is an I. So, yes. <laughs> <Right enough. laughs> Excellent. So, kind of moving on, I've got a couple more questions for you from people. Is Serena Volpi, she's one of my listeners and, in, well, right. and viewers in Italy. What's the favourite character you've played so far and why? Well, that's a really nice question. Um, I think it will have to be... Uh, it's going to have to be Nicole from Horizon. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason being because uh, Nicole, um, because it's a series, I got to play her for such a long time. Mm -hmm. um, 
pretty much two years of playing this character. And um, I feel that out of all the characters I played, she had the most um, of a character arc. So she changed a lot from start to finish. And um, I like the fact that I didn't even like her to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. She's not a very nice character to begin with. Yeah. But when you see her change and find out more about her, and then she changes a lot, and mm -hmm. particularly in season two, um, I just like being part of that. That's cool. That, that She's interesting. And um, she kind of gets some of the funniest lines as well, but she doesn't ever try to be funny. Everyone's always just laughing at Nicole. And that's what <laughs> I like about it. I watch it back and I'm like, oh, Nicole, you're so pathetic. And you've got no friends. <laughs> I love her. Like, I just, yeah. I just really, I care about that character. I don't even know if anyone else will. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, and it was a lot of fun. And when I played Nicole, I got the chance to just do a lot of fun stuff, you yeah. know, um, loot. Uh, department stores and running away from explosions <laughs> and then uh, you'll see some quite cool stuff in season two which I don't want to ruin for anyone but um, yeah it was, a, it was a lot of fun she's one of my favourites for sure Excellent, excellent, I guess that helps as well because I think with the series because you, you do you sort of develop and take on, you know you've got more experience more exposure to a character rather than in a film which can you know so yeah, yeah, no that's good and I'm definitely, definitely I need to see Horizon I really do <laughs> If I mean it's a uh, it's a lot shorter than than yeah. you need to worry about. Each episode is only like four or five minutes long. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, you know, even if just when you're having a cup of tea, if you just want to watch uh, an episode, you know, you don't you don't have to. I know it's not it's not everyone's cup of tea, but um, it's uh, it's 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 a nice little like it's a nice little hit of sci-fi, and then you can just enjoy it, and then it's gone kind of thing. It's not yeah. too overbearing like some series can be where they mm -hmm. just drag on and on forever it's um it's a tight little story and uh yeah i i, I just love it <laughs> so <laughs> cool. i hope you do get a shot I, I will do i will do if it's five minutes long it's something that i can download well download it's not is it on you yeah i'll see if i can download them off youtube or something or watch them it's on, it, um it's on youtube and it has uh its own uh channel as well which is like www.horizon web i think it's web series dot com yeah um and what they've done is with uh so there's 10 episodes but episode 11 is a cut of all of the episodes together into an hour-long feature okay because some people those being broken up i liked it more like an episode because i liked how each episode was wrapped up and how mm -hmm. the music came in at the start of each one but if you just want to watch like an hour-long kind of mini film yeah um then that episode 11 but you know however however you want to take your horizon <laughs> uh you enjoy it <laughs> excellent excellent i will it'll be a great i have to commute for an hour and a half on the train each way every day so it'll be a great thing to sit and watch sorted yeah sorted. <laughs> exactly paul knight um just tweeted in earlier as well is saying what horror film we're talking about horror films before obviously because you've been in mm -hmm. quite a few is uh what horror film would you love to remake now i might shout blasphemy at you soon <laughs> right gosh so which so which I'm uh, just going to check because it did break up a bit. Which horror, which Ho horror film would, which, I would you like it to? Was yeah, or which, which which one would you like to remake? Which one would you like? Oh, you've broken it again. Hang on. <laughs> no, you've broken up. Are you back? Ah, hello. Hope. You back? Yeah, I'm back. Right. Okay. Back. Yeah. Are you back? I'm back. I'm here. Whee! <laughs> Do a little tap dance. Yeah. So, <laughs> which horror? If which horror movie would you like to remake yourself? Or would you like to see being remade? Um, I suppose I don't know if it's technically horror, mm -hmm. but um, another film that I grew up absolutely in love with, which I think they might be remaking, is The Craft about a bunch of witches. Um, mm -hmm. It was kind of like a high school, quite dark teen uh, thriller. Yeah. Um, and I love that film. Uh, I would absolutely love to play a witch. Um, and um, I, I mean, the thing is, I say I'd like to be in it. I really wish they weren't remaking it because it's perfect. Yeah. Um, I feel that way about most films. I'm not a big fan of remakes, uh, I have to be honest with you. No, no. Um, I hated the remake of The Fog. I hated it. Um, I'm undecided about the remakes of um, Halloween. Um I don't know. I mean, I'm not a fan of remakes, but I guess just the chance of being something like that, then yeah, yeah. the craft um, or 
or scream as i've said because it's one of my favorites but um i'd be very very sad if that was ever a thing <laughs> yeah if they ever remade scream you just can't because that cat that was just perfectly cat it was just every and like you say um, yeah um you know, if you want to talk for another three hours, I can talk to you about remakes because I hate them, I can't stand them. <laughs> there is so many t- I've met over two years since doing this. I've met so much talent, as in yourselves and actors, but also behind the screenwriters. I've made friends with so many screenwriters, and the work that they do to get they can't even get their things looked at um, a lot of the time, which is why independent film is so successful because that's how a lot of people go with it, and you get more independent, you've broken up again. Yeah, you get more independent film. Um, oh, I can... yeah. yeah, so yeah, more in you know that's where these screenwriters are going. This, but they they don't get the chance to go mainstream because all they're doing is rehashing films that should never be remade yeah. because they were perfectly good in the first place. Yeah, it's um, yeah, I I completely agree with you. It's it's just such a shame they just they just don't need to exist. A lot of money gets mm-hmm. chucked into remakes. Yeah. They're never ever better. No. Um, maybe I can't even think when they would be, but uh, they just yeah they just don't need to be done. You know, people want original ideas. There's there's ways that you can make something um, and have elements like a tribute. Mm-hmm. Um, I can never pronounce it. Is it homage to something? Yeah, an homage, isn't it? <laughs> so, so for example, I mean, one film that I loved was um, The Faculty. Mm-hmm. Now the, the faculty I love because it was a bit like Scream. I think it was by some of the same people, but more so, it was a pretty much a teen version of the thing. They didn't remake the mm, thing; they true, just yeah. took the best, you know, they took the concept of the thing and did something mm. new with it and made a brilliant film. Like it's, it's a really good teen horror. Yeah. Um, there's never ever a remake of the thing. They just went, oh, you know, people will see the similarities yeah. there. Let's do that, and that's great take influence but don't remake stuff it just doesn't need to be done no not at all i mean the fog which you mentioned as well the original fog oh god i grew up on that and my dad it was every time we drove in the car because we used to drive to north wales from down where we lived and on holiday and i don't know if you're going to be able to hear this but every time we had like fog cloud we're driving through the mountain always heard <laughs> as my dad my, <laughs> my dad would knock on the window of the car and and we'd be sat in the background <laughs> <laughs> Think, thinking Wormhead would come and get us and that just it just didn't have it for me in the yeah, remake at we, all um, we have like a, a bit of a running uh, running theme now whenever I work with Charlie Steeds at Dark Temple so he's the guy that I work with on um, Escape from Cannibal Farm mm-hmm. Violent Desire and now the Barge People we always blast out various uh, soundtracks when we're on set just whilst we're getting ready yeah. um, just before we do, and we always go for the fog because <laughs> nothing gets in that perfect horror mood than when you start to hear that soundtrack kick in it's mm. just perfect it is. um so that's yeah and and in fact we all uh, we watched that um late night after a night shoot um of filming by people were like eh, let's just stay up and watch the fog so we did it's just uh, yeah everyone loves that film it's great oh yeah yeah. So really- <laughs> yeah and like you say it didn't need remaking and but th- th- that's yeah and uh yeah it's just i can't there's no more words for it it's just remakes are just <laughs> <laughs> bad no <laughs> there i don't think there is <laughs> I've, I was trying to think when you said it before, and I really can't think either of anyone a remade film that I think is good. I mean, there's, there's like you said, like the faculty slightly changed. Blade Runner 2049 is a huge. Is it 2049? The new one is a huge hit, but it's not a remake. It's following the story and continuing the story again. So you yeah, see, that's really bad. Um, or you know, if, they, if people make a, a prequel or whatever, I think. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the version of the thing that I like is still a remake, but it's an old remake. It's the Carpenter version. Yeah. I think the very original or black and white version. So I guess that kind of remake does does okay. But obviously, like even yeah. that was like the 80s, I think 70s or 80s. So Kurt Russell, that one wasn't it? Was it Kurt? Yeah, Kurt Russell. Yeah, yeah, so just, yeah. yeah. It's a really good one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, but yeah, no, I've lost my track of thought now. <laughs> I had that call. Got another question. Um, have we asked all the questions now? We have asked all the questions now. Oh, no, that's sad. Uh, oh, <laughs> got, we are questioned out. We are questioned out. Oh, I was well. going to say, uh, I was going to actually drop another one in. It's, it's a remake. It's not a remake, but it's another one coming out next year, and I'm really excited for it while we're just t- chatting about this kind of thing. I don't yeah. know if you. Das Boot. For me, I, oh, love, okay. I love war films. They're making a series. Okay. 
But it's not. I was. I was originally. I was thinking no, and I was. You know, like we just no chance. You can't remake Das Boot because it is the perfect film, as in that for that genre. I've actually not seen it. I know it's supposed to be incredible, and I've not seen it. But I am certainly not going to watch a remake. I will watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the original's great. I mean, it's a really long film, but you, I mean, there are certain films. I mean, there's quite a few films about submarines and stuff and ships, but obviously this one because you're in the the uh, director of it was just Wolfgang Peterson, wasn't it? And he was just you are just in the submarine because I've been in a U-boat, a World War Two U-boat, which was raised from the surface uh, from the sea. It was a there's one in Birkenhead. They've cut it into pieces now. But, oh, okay. ori- but originally they had it in one long as it was as it no one died on it which was why obviously they could raise it and you could walk down and it was before they'd done full the full archaeological surveys inside so as you're walking down it's really really cramped and you're thinking my god 70 people had to live on this but on the sides oh, no. there's a bottle of Beck's beer and there's the shoes the sailors shoes were still there <laughs> on the sides and the and on the top there was an air bubble so they could actually see the original ceiling covers and oh. and um, you know when then you, you watch Das Boat again and you hear the pinging of the noise of the atmosphere they just absolutely nail it because you can just it's it's people some people think said it was boring uh, in that respect because they just followed several minutes you could just hear the pings and it was silent but the actors' faces, you could see the sweat pouring down and that they're basically just pure petrified. Yeah, oh my um, goodness. Um, I'm pretty claustrophobic, so that is scary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be a horror film for you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. the series is the series after I found out and I, I decided to read about the series, it's not a remake, it's actually following on I won't ruin the end of the film, but it follows on from where the film finished. Okay. So it carries on with the different patrols and uh, Yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah, it's just good if they extend it and take it further and do something unique with it. It's yeah. just different. Yeah. Well, it was originally yeah. a TV series as well. It wasn't just a film. They actually had a ten-part, I think it was a ten-part series or a five-part. Oh. So, yeah, that was pretty good. Oh. German cinema is actually, you know, another, that's another thing for independent film. German cinema is amazing. There is some right, really yeah. good stuff coming out of there. Cool. Um, oh, cool. So, yeah. Before we finish, then, and we wrap things up for talking about it, I know you want to hear some impressions, <laughs> and I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of, um, is there anything you'd like to say to people who are listening at the moment? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, I've I've said it a few times throughout, but I, I suppose it's not very often you actually get to directly say to people um, listening or watching a uh, big thank you for support that um, they give to me because I am not where I want to be in the industry yet. I've not been doing it for an incredibly long period of time. I've had a lot of fun so far. I've got a lot that I want to do, but I do know that I wouldn't be able to do it without the supporters of my work and of my social media and people that just um, believe in me because sometimes you don't hear that back, even from your nearest and dearest. So for people that you don't know to root for you, means a heck of a lot so um yeah so genuinely thank you to everyone and thank you very much to you as well chris for um for inviting me on the show because you've given up your time to speak to me and it's just things like that which mean a lot to me so i hope at some point in my life and in my career i get to return the favor to other people in some way thanks kate that was absolutely fantastic i truly appreciate your time as i always do and um, and everybody who sent in questions and everyone who's watching and listening thank you all so much This has been Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Beers with Kate Davies Speak. Good night.